There are some pictures in this video that some of you might find distressing. Many of us were shocked when Blue Planet 2 revealed the extent of the plastic problem in our oceans. The density of plastic found in some parts of our Blue Planet is so high that the ocean is little more than a plastic soup. This has been known about and documented for decades, but what was new to many of us is how far spread the problem is and just how much plastic there is accumulating in certain areas of our world's oceans. Plastics are strong, lightweight and moldable and are used in thousands of products. They are not biodegradable, which makes them really useful, but this is also the problem with them as they can remain in the environment for many years. For example, a plastic shopping bag can last 10 to 100 years, a drink bottle 450 to 1000 years, and a six pack drink holder 90 years. The list just goes on. Plastic litter can be divided according to size. Microplastic is 0.33 millimeters up to 4.75 millimeters, and miso debris is from 4.75 millimeters up to 200 millimeters, and macro debris is greater than 200 millimeters. Much of the microplastic that is being observed in our oceans and on our beaches is due to large pieces of plastic having been degraded by wave action. There are a number of ways in which plastics can enter the marine environment, including rivers, drainage or sewage systems. It is estimated that 8.8 .8 million tonnes per year are entering the sea, which corresponds to five plastic bags full of plastic rubbish sitting on every foot of coastline around the world. Not surprisingly, the greater a country's population size, the greater the amount of plastic waste produced, with the top waste producing countries having some of the largest coastal populations. 16 of the top 20 producers of waste are middle income countries where fast economic growth is occurring but waste management structure is lacking. The biggest polluter is China, which contributes 1.32 to 3.52 million metric tonnes of plastic a year which is 27.7% of total mismanaged waste. 90% of all plastic that reaches the world's oceans gets flushed through just 10 rivers, 8 in Asia and 2 in Africa. So where is all this plastic waste going? Plastic items are found at the sea surface and much is washed up on the shorelines, even of remote islands. It has even been found in the Southern Ocean. It has also been found on the continental shelf seabed and in the deep sea and even at the bottom of the Mariana Trench, which is nearly 11,000 metres deep. 50 to 80% of shoreline debris is plastic. This is partly due to plastic being buoyant, but also because plastics such as bottles and cartons contain air, allowing them to accumulate at the surface and the possibility of being washed ashore. Enclosed seas such as the Mediterranean also have high concentrations as do gyres and oceanic convergences. One such gyre, with a huge amount of garbage concentrated within it, is the North Pacific Subtropical Gyre. An ocean gyre is a system of circular ocean currents formed by the Earth's wind patterns and the forces created by the rotation of the planet. The area in the centre of a gyre tends to be very calm and stable. The circular motion of the gyre draws debris into this stable centre, where it becomes trapped. This particular gyre forms what is known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, this patch spans waters from the west coast of North America to Japan. The mass of the plastic in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is estimated to be approximately 80,000 tonnes. This weight is equivalent to 500 jumbo jets. 75% of the total mass is made up of macro and mega plastics. Buoyant plastics are distributed within the top few metres of the ocean and it is estimated that the amount floating at the surface is 180 times more than marine life. Any animals migrating through or inhabiting this area are likely consuming plastic in the patch and there is a high risk of entanglement. Fishing nets, known as ghost nets, account for 46% of the mass found in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. These cause a lot of damage and even death to the animals that have been entangled. Plastic is found throughout the oceans, not just in the gyres, and there are some rather alarming statistics. There are many reports of sea turtles, marine mammals and seabirds becoming entangled with plastic, mostly plastic rope and netting. The species most affected were northern right whales, the green sea turtle and the hawksbill turtle. In 79% of cases, the animals suffered harm or death. The effects of entanglement include drowning, suffocation, lacerations, a decreased ability to catch food and an inability to avoid predators. Just the other day, a pregnant female minky whale 
was found dead on the Orkney Isles, with fishing gear caught in her baleen. According to experts from the Scottish Marine Animal Stranding Scheme, the fishing gear had become jammed in the baleen and then dragged behind the animal. This would have hugely impaired the animal from feeding or swimming normally, and likely led to an exhausting last few hours of life. Based on the flank bruising and lungs, it appears this creature live stranded and drowned in the surf line. Marine animals ingesting plastic is also a big problem. The most numerous species which ingest plastic were the northern fulmer, lace and albatross and the great shearwater. Effects of ingestion include starvation due to the plastic becoming stuck in the digestive system, a false feeling of being full and reduced fitness. The feeding of plastic by parent birds to their chicks has been well documented in seabirds such as puffins and albatrosses. Another distressing fact is that all known species of sea turtle are affected by entanglement or ingestion. 54% of all species of marine mammal and 56% of all species of seabird were also affected. 17% of species affected are listed as near-threatened, vulnerable, endangered or critically endangered. Thus plastics are contributing to the potential for species extinction. In June 2018, National Geographic shared the story of some scientists who were studying the olive ridley sea turtles in Costa Rica. They noticed a male turtle with something stuck up its nose. They managed to capture the turtle and removed a straw. Microplastics are also a big problem. They have been found in the water column and as far down as the ocean floor. Microplastics are very difficult to remove and are often mistaken for food by marine animals. In a recent study, microplastics were found in Arctic snow in huge amounts. As snow moves through the atmosphere, it binds with airborne particles and pollutants. This process is called scavenging. This indicates that there is significant contamination of microplastics in the atmosphere. Microplastics were also found in the Arctic water column, with surface waters having the highest microplastic concentration of all the world's oceans. Arctic deep sea sediments were contaminated with 6,000 particles in every 2.2 pounds of mud, and sea ice had even more microplastics, with as much as 12,000 particles per 34 ounces of melted ice. It is known that microplastics enter every level of the food chain in aquatic ecosystems, but how this is affecting human health needs a lot more research. The health impacts of inhaled microplastics are even less well known, and almost nothing is known about the effect of the airborne nanoparticles, which are essentially invisible. So what can we do to reduce our plastic usage? Recycling our plastic is obviously one of the many things that we can do. But there are lots of types of plastic that cannot yet be recycled, such as the wrappings you get around your vegetables. We can try to buy groceries that don't come wrapped, but this is not always easy. I have found a shop near where I live that sells rice and pasta from a dispenser, and you can take a paper bag home with the product, or you can take your own container in to fill. Shops like this are springing up all over the place. In April 2018, Many of the UK supermarket chains signed up to the UK Plastics Pact, which aims to tackle plastic waste. There are a series of targets that they hope to meet by 2025. These include the elimination of unnecessary single-use plastic packaging and 100% of plastic packaging to be reusable, recyclable or compostable. Earlier this year, Waitrose trialled Waitrose Unpacked in Oxford. This enabled shoppers to buy pasta, rice, grains, and many other products from dispensers. 160 loose fruit and vegetable products were also available and plastic was removed from flowers and indoor plants in favour of 100% recyclable and 100% PEFC certified craft paper. There was also a borrow a box scheme that enabled shoppers to shop with a box supplied by the store which is taken home and returned on their next visit. It was a great success and is to be rolled out to other stores. Other supermarkets are also starting to reduce packaging and I'm really excited that as consumers we will soon have much more choice about our food packaging. A good thing to do with plastic that can't be recycled is to make an eco brick from it. This is an amazing idea and there is a great website called ecobricks.com that will guide you through it all. Eco bricks, as long as you can get them to the correct weight, can be used to make many things such as chairs, tables, even greenhouses and schools. Scientists are also working on a solution, and in April 2018, scientists at the University of Portsmouth announced that they had discovered an enzyme that can digest plastic. The scientists were examining the structure of a natural enzyme which is thought to have evolved in a waste recycling centre in Japan, allowing the bacterium to degrade plastic as a food source. 
The aim was to determine how the enzyme evolved and if it might be possible to improve it. They ended up accidentally engineering an enzyme which was even better than the original enzyme at breaking down PET plastics. The hope is that within a few years there will be an industrially viable process to turn PET and possibly other types of plastic back into their original monomers so that it can be sustainably recycled. Another fantastic development is a large boom to deploy at sea in the hope of capturing plastics in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. This has been developed by the Ocean Cleanup, which is a non-governmental engineering environmental organisation. The boom set sail from San Francisco in December 2018. This was a prototype, and the hope was that this would collect 1,000 kilograms of plastic a week, reducing the amount of plastic in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch by 50% within five years. Unfortunately, there were some technical issues and it had to go back to San Francisco to investigate what went wrong. However, in June, the boom went back out to sea and is successfully catching plastics down to as small as one millimetre. In December, all the plastic collected is to be brought back to shore for recycling. One of the ideas is to make a selection of products to sell, which will cover the cost of the cleanup operation. If this method could be made to work, then eventually 60 such booms could be deployed and along with the reduction in use of plastics would go a long way to address the harm that we are inflicting on our oceans. There is a huge movement to change our lifestyles in order to reduce our plastic use and many scientists are developing technology to tackle the problem of the plastics that are already in our oceans or to recycle plastic using enzymes. I feel hopeful that if everyone plays their part then we can begin to reverse the horrific effects plastics are having on our one world.